Porcelain is often called China after the country that invented it more than 1,200 years ago. It looks delicate, but is actually the hardest type of ceramic material. It's even used in electrical insulators because it withstands very high heat. But most people think of porcelain as decorative. This company makes 40 different porcelain items. It all starts with a sketch of the piece, in this case, a teapot. After that, a master mold of the piece, a negative made of plaster. Craftsmen use it to make a production mold. Porcelain begins as powder, a blend of three minerals, quartz, kaolin, and feldspar. The workshop mixes this powder with water to make a wet paste called slip. A craftswoman fills the mold with slip. Within 10 minutes or so, the porous plaster absorbs the water, leaving a crust of hardened slip. After pouring the rest out, she waits another 30 minutes for the crust to continue hardening. Then she peels away the mold and gets a first look at her teapot. Here, she removes excess crust from a different mold for the spout. She waits about 10 minutes, until the spout is hard enough to handle, but still soft enough to sculpt. With a utility knife, she carves open the end of the spout. With a little water and a sponge, she smooths out the edges and curves the rim. Next, she extracts the handle from a third mold. Then she pierces 12 holes in the spout side of the teapot to filter out the tea leaves when you pour. She brushes on some slip to attach the spout and the handle. This model has a wedge along the collar to help align the handle correctly. Other designs have small notches instead. She brushes on more slip to ensure the parts will bond, then sponges the surrounding surface to smooth out the drips. After the piece dries for two more days, she carves away the lines along the handle and under the spout and sands down the rim. They make some pieces using a pressure casting system, the molds made of resin and tiny polyester beads that create pores which absorb the water in the slip. After a hydraulic press closes the mold, the machine injects slip into the cavity. Twelve minutes later, a craftsman uses a suction plate to remove what'll become a serving platter. He places the piece on a plaster block. The porous plaster lets the underside dry without leaving marks. They fire the items in a giant kiln. The kiln heats up gradually, taking eight hours to reach a searing 1,000 degrees Celsius then 12 more hours to cool down. Firing hardens the porcelain and enables it to better absorb a coat of enamel. After brushing off any dust, the craftsman dunks each piece in enamel, a protective coating. The porcelain absorbs it right away, and this glaze turns into a shiny skin once the pieces are fired again. She handles each piece in a particular way to avoid leaving drip marks. In the second firing, they make the porcelain pure white by carefully controlling the air in the kiln. Reducing the oxygen level removes any undesirable colors. This time, the temperature is higher, 1400 degrees Celsius. It shrinks the pieces by about 15%. After a quality check, a craftsman applies the company logo with a transfer decal. The logo melts in when the plate goes back in the kiln for another 12 hours at 850 degrees Celsius. In the end, the porcelain is translucent enough for light to shine right through. Other pieces offer more illustrated displays for a truly fine dining experience.